definitely means a lot that this is happening in, in Vegas. Um, to be frank, Vegas is not the best market, not because it doesn't have the best fans. There's great fans in Vegas, but it's a tourist city. We just got lucky, we got blessed. I mean, nine countries, uh, all states domestically, Puerto Rico, DC, and to sell out in under four minutes. 11,600, if you ask Matt, 20,000 people. It's not a secret that there was 43,000 people in the queue. So that what that tells me is we probably need a bigger venue. So when it came down to uh, All In and we had an extra hour presented to us kind of at the, you know, in the last minute, and we had a lot of people already in town with StarCast. So we thought the idea that we would do this battle royal, you know, uh, but we'll do, a, we'll do a really good battle royal. But again, we didn't have the money for it. So we called it the over budget battle royal and I ended up selling the soft goods of the ring, the apron, the buckles, so that we could afford it and everyone could get a proper payday. And now, I wouldn't say it's over budget anymore, but it's still the over budget battle royal and it's returning for double or nothing. Uh, battle royals sometimes are, are a piss break match. The over the budget battle royal wasn't that at all. It could hold up to any of the other matches on the show. And this year we have a really great incentive for the winner and I can't speak to the incentive and I'm so sorry. Uh, that I can't, but I know being in the Battle Royal is a great moment, for sure. You're gonna be in front of eyes that you've never been in front of before, but winning it will put you on the board. It's a much more interesting story to take someone who hasn't got an opportunity, who has, who has been denied one, and, and say, hey, here's your opportunity, here's your moment, go play your music. It's special. So I hear AEW is for everyone. Well, Sunny Kiss is for everyone. It's crazy because you know I didn't think I was gonna be this successful while doing it. Because when I, when I came in 2013, it was kind of just like, okay, let's see where this goes. And then it's like I got serious about it because I'm like, okay, wow, I can really be like some, something special in wrestling because there's no one out there like me. And then being gay is like. It, and the beginning was challenging, but I think after, like after I got comfortable with who I was and I got confident about who I was, people started to kind of see that and it kind of made it easier. So it wasn't so much of a challenge anymore, it actually was kind of like, that's something that was beneficial. While you may see me out there shaking my ass, you can guarantee on May 25th, I'll be kicking it too. There's LGBT people um, who are trainees and also wrestlers who are coming up that look up to me. And I feel like it's my job and I have to be that role model and I have to kind of continue to inspire and make people feel more comfortable that, you know, let them know that they can do this. And you can be feminine, you can be, you can be unapologetic and, you know, you can be successful. You'll see. Just when, once I hit that ring, it's, it's go time. I'm looking forward to following some of these guys along their way because it's talent from all over the place, all over the board, just pulling them from different, different directions for this opportunity. So I started in 2009 with the Knight family in Norwich. I was there for about six and a half years. It, it was hard. Like I remember one time I was, I was in like the wrestling gym with a few of my buddies, contemplating quitting, but they were like, no, just keep at it, just keep at it. If, if this is going to go anywhere, I'm just gonna have to uproot my life and move to somewhere where it's going to be easier to, to get my face out there. So I quit my job, I had a really secure job at the time and decided, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to be a full-time professional wrestler. It's not just a hobby anymore. If I don't wrestle, I don't live, I don't eat, I don't, do you know what I mean? I can't pay my bills. So it, it made me even hungrier to do that. And obviously it's turned into a legitimate career now. And then I got the, the call from Cody saying, okay, we're gonna have you in the over budget battle royal. And I was like, perfect. A lot of people aren't gonna be familiar with Kip Sabian. A lot of people aren't gonna be familiar with the work, the body of work that I've had over here. So this match is perfect. I guarantee when you watch that match and there'll be one name 
that you come away from that going, ah, oh, damn, I need to see more of this guy. I'm going to be someone in this business. I want people to know who I am and I want people to remember who I am. There's guys who have struggled and I can respect that. And there's a lot of guys just who need this. My journey began with meeting the Young Bucks um, in their backyard uh, in 2000. With that, we all kind of like went up the ranks in indie wrestling uh, together for a while. And then they skyrocketed. And uh, you know, that's where it was kind of a little question of myself of like, am I that good? Can I, can I kind of make it there? It was in my head kind of like, nah, you're not, you're not good enough. And so I kind of stepped away from it for a few years, for seven years actually. And uh, that's where I kind of met my wife, started a family. Because that was more important to me than wrestling, was just having a family. And so I was like, if I got to give up wrestling to have a family, then that's what I got to do. At All In, my wife had made seven wrestlers gear and two fan-made projects during that time. When I put on other people's gear that my wife has made, um, at first it's just the overall like, it's looking good, like good job, hey, this is awesome. But there is that, that feeling when I'm wearing it and I think about like stepping in their shoes, like you just feel like superb, you just feel on top of the world. In January of 2018, I got back into wrestling and it's been a wild ride. I was like, with you making gear and me wrestling, I'm like, we're unstoppable. I'm like, we're like a freaking power couple. The main thing that's gonna motivate me in, in life is my kids and my wife. Um, just wanting them to grow up better than what I've been giving them this last four years. They deserve a lot more, especially my wife. And that's one of the things I, uh, I promised her when we got married, is that each year I wanted to make our lives better. And so uh, I think it's time I, uh, I start delivering on my promises. It's gonna be um, really touching. It has the chance to be better than any other match on the show, top to bottom. And uh, that's the over budget battle royal. It's a very exciting time for All Elite Wrestling after selling out Double or Nothing in just four minutes. 12,000 tickets sold at the MGM Grand in just four minutes. It's unprecedented. And everybody is so excited. Cody and the Bucks are saying, we did it. And every single person who bought a ticket to go to the show and who's going to watch at home and pay-per-view is saying, we did it. We are part of something special. We made this happen together. We did it. But is that really the truth? Huh? Really? Honestly? Or is the more accurate description, I did it. As in Chris Jericho single-handedly sold 12,000 tickets in four minutes because that is the truth. It doesn't matter if Kenny Omega's on the show or Cody's on the show or MJF is on the show. I made it happen single-handedly. I am the sole reason why AEW is a smash success right out of the gate. And I want all of you to thank me for that. You're welcome. Uh, Cody, did, uh... Just, uh... Just give me a second. Just a second. 